In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this t-shirt design by using Kittle. And just in case you've never heard of Kittle before, it is a really cool new design tool, which makes it extremely easy to create professional looking, high quality t-shirt designs. So I've been using Kittle for a few weeks now, and I must say I'm really impressed with the tool because if you're a beginner, then it's really easy to get started with. The interface is really clean and modern, and it's just very intuitive. You know, creating a nice design does not take very long if you compare it with uh, some of the other design tools out there. That's another benefit even for like expert designers. Um, if you're used to creating a design from scratch, you know that it can take quite a long time sometimes, and Kittle really shortens the process a lot. So so it's definitely worth trying out for anyone and you can even use the free version to get started and get the hang of it. So uh, if you want to give it a try, there's a link down below in the description and let's jump into the tutorial. So to get started on Kittle, you want to head up to the top right corner and click on new project. The first thing I'm going to do here is change the DPI to 300 and then I will configure the width which is 4500 and the height is 5400. This is the merch by Amazon dimensions that I usually go with for my t-shirt designs and then just hit create and next up I'm going to head over to the panel on the left hand side where it says elements if you click onto that that's going to bring up a ton of pre-made elements within Kittle and if you type something into the search bar up here then you can find results related to that topic so in this case let's type in skull because I do want to use a sugar skull for this design and there it is so let's just drag and drop this onto our artboard you've got a bounding box right here around the graphic so you can increase the size and if we just center this on the artboard by using the buttons over here as we can see that will align it to the center now next up I'm going to head to the bottom Bottom right corner we've got this section for color schemes and Kittle has got quite a few nice pre-made color schemes in here and I'm just going to scroll through and try and find one that matches St. Patrick's Day so we're looking for green colors I think this one might work really well so just click on that and it will apply to your current design that you've got selected the next thing I want to do is add a hat to this skull to make it look more St. Patrick's Day themed. And for that, head back to the Elements tab and we go to Search Irish up here to get a lot of Irish themed graphics. Obviously, there's a lot of clovers, there's beer mugs, which is very suitable uh, for St. Patrick's Day. But there's also a lot of hats right here that you can choose from. Uh, I quite like this option right here. So you can drag and drop it onto your artboard, increase the size with the bounding box once again, and uh, you can see center the graphic once again over here with these buttons. Now the colors don't match our skull but we can quickly fix that by heading up to the top right corner right here uh, where it says object colors. You can click on one of them and then you can either choose from the document colors or you can use the color picker to quickly sample a color from your design. So let's say the darkest color we want to use this one then the hat um, the main part of the hat we go into to sample the lighter green right here and the clover over. I think what I'm going to do with the clover is I will sample the same green but make it a bit brighter like this so it stands out a bit more. Um, there we go. I think that's made the hat very nice and matching. Um, I think we could also add some clovers to the eyes of the skull right here once again to just uh, bring home that St. Patrick's Day feel. So let's type in clover right here into the elements window and see what it comes up with. Um, so I'm looking for a very very plain one sort of like this and uh, that's just going to make it easier um, to make out in the eye. We don't want it too detailed because it's quite small and so you have to decrease the size and try and center it within this eye. Um, in terms of the color, I think we're going to use the same one as on the hat, which is right here in the document colors. You can find it quickly for a shortcut. And now you can duplicate this over uh, in two ways. So you could right click onto this and just hit copy and then you could right click again and paste. Now it's been pasted in the same place. Um, you could also, if you wanted to do it more quickly with a shortcut, you could just hold down Alt on your keyboard while you've got the clover selected and then just click and drag. That's going to copy it over. And if you then hold down Shift, it's going to keep it in line with the object that you've just 
copied. Next up, I'm going to add a background color to our design because I'm actually planning to use this on a green t-shirt. Obviously, suits and Patrick's Day. So in the bottom right corner, you've got this layers tab. If you click on that, you can see all of the different objects in your design. You can hide them like this. And also you have got the background layer. So if you select that, you then get these options right here at the top and you can change it from white to a different color. So let's choose a nice looking green, um, which might represent the t-shirt we're going to upload to afterwards. And then we can click out of this. The next step I wanted to take here is to make it a bit easier to place text on our design, because right now we've got this massive skull with a very big hat and it just makes it awkward to have text along the top or bottom or even next to it. There's just not very much space. So what I want to do instead is I want to take this entire skull and have it three times in a row. So first of all, I'm going to size it down a little bit and then hold down Alt while having everything selected and click on the skull and then drag it over, hold down shift to keep it in line and drop it very closely next to one another. I want to do the same for the other side. So here we go. And I think I'm going to delete the hats of these outer ones because that's going to leave an opportunity for us to actually arch some text along the top around this hat and make the design look a bit more interesting. Now, one quick tip to make sure the spacing in between these skulls is the same is you would have to group each skull individually. So uh, select all of the objects on the left skull, hit Control G, then select everything of the central skull, Control G on your keyboard once again to group and the same for the last one. And now we can select all of them and head up here to tidy and that is as you can see going to move them into equal spacing which is really really handy um, now we can use all of these skulls at once if we group them together with Control G once again. By the way, if you want to find the shortcuts, uh, if you struggle to remember them, they are down here in the bottom left corner. As you can see right here, it says Control G group selected elements. The same keyboard shortcut also ungroups them, by the way. So if, you, if you're sick of having them in a group and you need to select them individually, just hit Control G again. And all of the other shortcuts are here as well. Control Z is very useful for undoing your recent action in case you did something wrong. So definitely bear that in mind right here. The shortcuts are linked at the bottom. But once you've got all of these skulls grouped together, you can then hit the center button to center them on your artboard. So those are some useful tips right there just for tidying up your design. And the next step I want to take is actually adding some text to this. So to add some text to your design, you can just simply hit T on your keyboard and that is going to pop out this text window. Now our text is here in the middle, quite small, um, which makes it hard to size it up. Um, but if you click out of the text, uh, just anywhere on the artboard, then these bounding boxes will appear and you can drag on the corner right here to make the text bigger. Let's place it along the top so we can see what's going on. In this case, um, I'm going to use a font that I found that's really nice for this sort of style called Partisan. So Partisan by default is on the sans serif version but i do like the serif version better which adds these sort of little sharp bits and on the top of the letters and i would also recommend changing the text color to white in our case because that's going to stand out better on the green t-shirt Next up, I'm going to type in shenanigans up here. And as you can see, that has made the box sort of too full. So you will have to sometimes adjust your box a little bit uh, by dragging it on the side right here. That's going to make the word um, appear in one line instead. And next up, I'm going to arch the text, which you can do right here in the bottom right. It's made very easy for you in Kittle. I do really like these transformation settings. So if you click arch, it is literally going to arch your text instantly. And you can also adjust just the curve right here. Um, so how much the arch is actually affecting the transformation. Um, I'm going to drag this down a bit. I think it could do with being a little bit bigger. So you can also use this option right here to increase or decrease the text size on the right hand side. Um, now I'm going to just center this to make sure it's in the middle of our design. And the next feature that's really useful within the text settings is up here in the top right corner. So if we click on this little A plus symbol, it's going to open some shading effects and I really, really like these. So for example, if we use this one right here, just click on that, um, you can change the color. I recommend for this design to use one of the dark greens like this one right here. And now you can adjust the offset 
so how big the shadow is and you can also change the angle so where the light source is essentially coming from and that just makes it really easy to play around with different custom text settings so um, i wouldn't overdo it with the shadow like you want to make it more of a subtle effect you can definitely make the text look a lot nicer this way um, one thing i would also recommend is actually heading back to the text options right here and adding a little bit of a border in the same green that we just used so if we just increase the border weight a little bit you can probably see that the text is now easier to read and it looks more three-dimensional and I mean feel free to play around with these settings there's some other options that you could explore that do look really nice all of them so uh, it's definitely an interesting tool right here that Kittle has implemented into their text editor and that's it for the top bit of text um, if you want to drag this down now and use it or use the same template essentially for the bottom you can just hold down alt on your keyboard and then drag this down once again to duplicate hold down shift to keep it in line and then once it's copied over you can click on this arch function again and that is going to put it back into one line um, like the default and i'm going to change this text to squad so we've got the shenanigans squad right here and let's make this piece of text a little bit bigger so it stands out a bit more at the bottom and fills out more of the space and last but definitely not least, I would like to fill out some of the white space right here, which is essentially the sort of empty areas around our text and our objects to just give this design the final touch. And Kittle has definitely got us covered for this because there's a ton of really nice decorative elements within the sidebar right here. So on the left hand side, if we go back to elements and click on ornaments, then you're going to see a lot of categories. I quite like the spot elements. I also quite like the calligraphic section right here. So let's just open this up. You can hit show all. It's going to pop out in a bigger window. Um, I really like this option right here, for example. So if we drag and drop this down here, we could arrange it sort of along the squad text. Um, just rotate it a little bit. And and I think I'm going to change this color to white. And then you could uh, right click onto this and then you could duplicate this down once again by holding down Alt, clicking on it, Shift to keep it in line. And then if you right click onto these, you can actually flip them vertically very quickly like this and that will make it look more symmetrical. And I think I will also change the color to the dark green that will make it match this text quite nicely with the shadow. And now for more symmetry, I'm going to select both of these and then duplicate them over to the other side and just flip these around horizontally in this case. So there we go. That has filled out the space quite nicely right here at the bottom. I think I will also drag one of these up here because we've got some extra space between the skulls and shenanigans. So uh, if I adjust this a little bit to match the curve of the text, uh, then we can use that up here. I'm going to change the color of this to the dark green as well. And once again, copy it over with the Alt key on your keyboard and then right click and flip horizontally to make it look more symmetrical. And I think lastly, there's a bit of space right here which I'd like to fill out, but we're going to use something else instead. Um, I'm going to head to the spot elements over here and use some of these uh, highlights right here. They, they look really nice and definitely would suit a lot of designs. So I think white is more suitable for that element. And once again, we can drag it over to the other side and flip it horizontally. So there we go. I think that's created a really nice looking St. Patrick's Day design. And the final touch I would give to this is actually some texture, which Kittle has also got you covered for in a really, really nice way. They've got some really cool preset textures and you can find them over here on the left hand side. Um, if you head to this little spotty button or icon, and if you click on that, you can see different categories. So we've got grunge, paper textures, pattern textures, loads and loads of stuff. I really like the crack textures. We show all of these. They they do look really nice for t-shirt design. I'll give you an example with this one right here. Now, the preset settings might look a bit confusing, but essentially I would recommend changing this from color burn to alpha mask. I think that already makes a big improvement. And then if we clip the content, then as you can see, it applies the texture only to the graphics and the text on your design file, not to the background. That's definitely what you want to do. So you want to hit this clip content action uh, or function, and then you can also flick through the textures again on the, on the left hand side, and they will all automatically be applied to your design, and you can quickly choose one that you think 
uh, fits it the best. Once you're ready, once you've found the texture that you want to use and you've finished your design off, all you need to do is head up to the top right corner right here where it says download, click on that. Then you want to make sure to remove the background. So this option has to be ticked, otherwise it will be exported with this green background layer. And then you can just click for digital use PNG. That is the ideal format for us for all of the print on demand websites. And just a quick tip at the end of this video, another really cool thing about Kittle is that you can use other people's templates. So I've created this design and I've published it for you. Uh, I'm going to leave the link to this in the description of this video. So you can literally open this up and use it as your own design. You just have to change the text around a little bit and you're fine to use it as your own template. So you can literally click into this, change this to drinking squad or whatever, and it's going to quickly change the design about. So I think that's a really nice feature to make this more of a community feel within this tool. It's definitely going to be handy for you to save even more time. And if you don't want to use my design, do not worry because there is thousands of other options right here. Now you can scroll through them and use any of these as your templates. Or if you're looking for a specific topic, just type it into here into the search mask. So if you wanted this summer theme design, type that in and you're going to get a ton of results of really nice templates that you can quickly change around. If you want to learn how to increase your sales on Merch for Amazon by using Amazon ads, then make sure to check out this video next where I walk you through a process of setting up ad campaigns and optimizing them for better results.